Hey, what's up guys? So we're going to be doing a deck profile for a Watt deck that topped, and that was at the European Championships 2012, and congratulations to Nicholas Petz for running this deck, and this deck is awesome. Uh, not only was it a deck that no one really saw coming, but on top of that, he had zero cards in his extra deck, plus he was using Valor and Reborn, so he had options to go for those, but he's like, you know, I don't even need an extra deck, that's how good I am. So props to Nicholas for topping with this. Uh, especially because, you know, it's Watts. No one really expected that. So I guess people perhaps maybe didn't have a side deck against it. But that said, I don't know how he was playing it too well. But, I mean, he did top with it. So obviously it worked out for him. But let's jump into the deck profile. So we got three Watt Cobras. Basically the, uh, I guess you can call it the Stratos. It, he searches any uh, Watt monster. Generally you're going to want to add multiple Watt Cobras. So you can get your uh, whole, like, gadget engine going for at least three of them. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, next up, he's only playing Watt Giraffe. Now, this is why I'm like, I don't understand why you'd only play one. Generally, Watt Giraffe is kind of like the best one, because it can attack your opponent directly, and um, after it attacks your opponent directly and inflicts battle damage, uh, they cannot activate any spell, trap, or effects um, until the end phase of this turn. So I felt like this card was one of the best cards. And on top of that, he's not even playing Honest, and I'm like, well, I don't understand how Watts can really do that well without Honest, but... A player managed to do it, so congrats to him. Anyways, next up, he's playing three Watt Hopper. Now, the reason why Watt Hopper is used is because there's a thing called the Watt Hopper Lock. Basically, you just get two of these out on the field, and your opponent has a really hard time because uh, they can't target Watts or um, they can't select him as an attack target. So it really becomes a problem, uh, and it's really hard to deal with this. Um, you can go for a, a Black Rose, because Black Rose doesn't target. That's an option, and as you guys know, uh, Synchros aren't as popular as X Exceeds are really popular now, and maybe against like Dino Rabbit, they realistically have very few options to get over this. I'm thinking if you play a lot of uh, Dino Rabbits, uh, it's gonna be problematic for them, because uh, Dolka can't negate Watt Hopper, <laughs> nothing really activates, and it's just a really problematic thing for them to deal with, and perhaps he can maybe even deck them out, because uh, obviously um, he can sit there and not activate any of his, his things that search through cards. Uh, next up, he's playing three Watt Dragonflies, so this one, once it's uh, destroyed by battle, um, or by card effect, which is really awesome. That's why uh, this makes this card so awesome. You can special on one monster from your deck, you're allowed to summon Watt Dragonfly himself, so pretty good stuff. Uh, especially since you can go really defensive with this card. You really, you won't get OTK'd too uh, often with that. And he's playing three Veilers. Uh, then Double Shiny Angel just helps out. It's more like Searchers, because I think he just wanted to go for that Watt Hopper Lock. I think his goal was uh, to go for the Watt Hopper Lock and then just kind of attack him over and over for game. And that, you know, that is kind of what they can do. And then uh, one random card card D, you know, just... Actually, it's a pretty good card. I guess he, he just needs to get just that one extra draw power, then he's like, he's good enough with that. Maybe he only had one. I'm not sure the exact reason. Next up, two Shroud of Greed. Pretty good card, especially with all his back row, which we'll get into later. Um, pretty good card. I mean, just keep this card on board, and then you get to go plus one with it. Uh, three Duality, because Watts isn't a deck that special summons too often. Uh, generally, you're going to special summon on your opponents from once they destroy something by battle, uh, either your Shining Angel or your Dragonfly. Uh, next up, uh, we have Messenger of Peace, which is interesting. I mean, Watts are... Um, relatively low in attack, so it kind of works out for them. Uh, next up, my body is a shield. Interesting choice, though. Perhaps it was used uh, in fear of a Torrential Tribute, because Torrential's at two. Uh, you know, Mirror Force is also uh, an available card, which can hurt Watts, um, you know, just because you want to keep attacking directly every turn, and uh, if they have Mirror Force, it kind of uh, slows down your progress of beating your opponent down. Uh, next turn, uh, I mean, next up, we have uh, Monster Reborn, one for one. One for one is really good in this deck because it allows you to go for the Watt Hopper lock really easy. All you have to do is go summon Watt Hopper, activate one for one, get out another Watt Hopper, and then you have the Watt Hopper lock. It's a pretty uh, good lock, though, against a lot of decks. I'd say, like, Dino Rabbits really have a tough time. Same thing with Chaos Dragons. Like, they're going to have to make Black Rose, uh, and some of them just don't have room in the action deck, they just don't play it, and I think that that is kind of why he perhaps won, uh, just because of the surprise factor, and... <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Uh, next up, Recycling Battery, so it allows him to add two Thunder-type monsters with 1,500 or less attack from his graveyard to his hand. So, uh, again, maybe that's why he was only playing what, one Watt Draft. I've personally felt like maybe two would have been good, uh, just because I think this is one of the best Watt cards in general. Uh, next up, three Dark Bribe, Solemn Judgment, and then three, the huge revolution is over. Uh, I personally think Starlight Road is a lot better. I mean, what are they going to do, Trap Stun? Like, Trap Stun's not really seeing any play uh, right now anyways, so I felt like, I don't know why he didn't play Starlight Road. Perhaps he was like, you know what, I don't even need Starlight Road. I don't want a Stardust Dragon. I don't want an extra deck. And that, that's why I think this deck is so awesome. And he just decided, you know, to, he, the huge revolution was over. So, um, when anything that activates, it would destroy two or more uh, cards on the field. You can negate and uh, banish the card, whatever 
uh, card that would banish her. So I guess it banishes Judgment Dragon instead of sending it to the graveyard. So it's interesting. Um, I mean, I don't think anyone was playing like Magical Stone Excavation, so it's not like Heavy Storm. Getting that back would be an option for most decks. Uh, next up, two Regeki Break. Now this card, it's an interesting card. It's kind of like Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Uh, it does destroy, but you have to discard a card, and that's why I'm not too much of a fan of it personally. Uh, next up, he's playing Mirror Force, two Phoenix Chain, because I mean, it doesn't matter that there's uh, a monster that he can't get over. He's just going to attack you directly anyway. And then last up, Rival of Warlords. So this will be really good against like windups. Um, also, uh, you know, um, anything that's not you know just all warriors. So I mean, against E heroes, it won't be too great. But you know, any obscured synchros. Uh, I don't know, maybe like Dino Rabbit wind up. That's what his plan was. I felt I kind of felt like Gozen match would have been an option as well. But um, the thing is, um, these are, most of these are thunder. This one is fairy and uh, spellcaster. But most of them are thunder, and that's all, the only thing you need to keep on board. So. Um, I don't know, maybe goes in match would have been an option as well. I don't know. I mean, either way, uh, I don't think Six Hammers were too popular. Uh, I don't believe any of them topped there, but yeah, it's pretty interesting deck. And I'm pretty excited that this is top because it's just something not meta, and that's always awesome. So let's get into the uh, side deck here because he had no extra deck. Uh, so he's got double Lava Golem, he's got three MST, seven tools, two Bottomless, three Shadow Imprisoning, two Twisters, two Prohibition. And I think the Twisters were there because I think he was afraid of Royal Decree being side decked against him. And so um, Double Twister will get rid of that. Seven Tools will get rid of that as long as it's there before Royal Decree is activated. And then three Mystical Space Typhoon just to get rid of Decree. So I think he was really afraid of Decree being side decked. And that, can, that was pretty obvious. I mean, you know, he's playing Watts, a deck that runs a lot of traps generally just to uh, keep them alive and being able to just kind of overpower you by just attacking directly so fast, uh, as fast as they possibly can. Interesting deck though, and so congratulations to Nicholas uh, Pets for topping. Playing Watts with no extra deck because he has no fear. He's like, I don't need an extra deck to top. So that is pretty cool. And he got, top, this is the top 32. I don't know exactly what place uh, he got. Um, it doesn't say yet, but I will uh, probably update you guys on the description box below if I ever find out uh, what place uh, Nicholas actually got. But thanks for watching, guys. So. That's a lot deck for you, so you know, it's pretty cool to see, you know, kind of rogue decks still be out there and being able to top. But thanks for watching, guys. Asian Eyes White Dragon, signing out.